Hello and welcome to Giga Play Studio and our Beginners View tutorial series. In our ninth tutorial, we're going to learn how Vue integrates with Poser, learn more about materials, learn how to bring other kinds of objects into our scene, and about the Smart Drop button. Hold on to your hats. This one's going to be a fast and fun ride. Let's open Poser right now. Here's our empty space we have now, and we're just going to bring something else in. Here we have this clank figure that we'll click on to bring it in. This is a robot that Vladimir purchased from Daz3D because he likes robots and uses them a lot. And by the way, we'll be starting a new tutorial series with a friend of ours who is very good at Poser. And this is about how to use Poser, so look for that in the near future here at Geek Up Play. But for now, we're just going to have a quick look at it in relation to view. So now, if we click up here, we open a bunch of tabs and we'll go click on the poses one. And there are several presets here. And we'll just select this fighting karate pose here, right there. So up at this trackball, we can move this guy around to take a look at Clank and this karate pose. You can do animation if you want, and we'll do that another time too. But for now, let's just save this as Clunk. File, save as, and K-L-U-N-K, Clunk. So now let's go back into View. And Poser and View are very nicely integrated. They made it pretty easy for us to import things from Poser. When we begin, we'll go into Options, and in the General Options tab, we can specify where the Poser directory is, so you can link to that. Or you can press File, Import Object, and select the object you want to import. And if this is our first time we are importing, it will ask us where the location of our poser directory is so we can integrate it and also it will ask us if we want it integrated so we can edit objects. But you should know that integrating view and poser like that will slow things down. So here's these normal options. We'll just use default and in these options, import options, we have single mesh or we could separate them and you can change the pose in view but we'll just leave those as default for now and also you can choose to import a whole poser animation or you can import just a single frame. Since we have only one single frame, we'll set this as single frame and select OK. And now here's our clank figure. We'll just drop him to the ground plane now. Let's take our camera and adjust it. OK. And one thing that we probably want to do is to put our robot in a more interesting environment. So let's create maybe a wall by selecting a cube object and then changing its size. And then we'll just put this behind him. And it's actually nice because you can see the shadow right here. And also while we're working with this wall, let's double click here on the material sphere and then click on it to load a material. And one that's nice that comes with the rocks is a brick wall. So we'll click OK. And now we'll add a layer to give some interest to this wall. We'll simply press the Add Layer button and we'll choose something just like we were choosing a regular material. And for now we'll just pick the default in the rocks. And now they are mixed together and act like the mixed materials. So this slider just changes how that overlay is happening which one is dominant. And so now we'll change the color of this default material. In the color tab we right click on color and we can choose edit color map and make that color a little greenish, something dark green. And now you can see how this is green already. So now we'll go to the environment tab right here and here in the altitude constraint we can change the range here and remove some from the top. And you can see some of the brick is revealed now. And this fuzziness we can change that so that the green doesn't end so abruptly. And then in this Bumps tab, we can change the texture, make it not so smooth. Here in the Bumps tab, we double time click and select different bump maps. And that's a smooth. And we'll decrease the depth 
so it isn't too rough and now press OK. If you preview right now we can take a look at what we just did right now. The bumps might not be looking quite how we want. You can see. So then we'll just go back to our material and remember that this default is the color that we added. And so now we're in the bumps tab and we'll reduce the depth to 250 and up here is the scale. This controls the size of our details. So let's reduce that down to 0.10. So now we'll preview it again. It looks a lot smoother and more realistic. It's finer. So there's our moss on the old wall. So now let's add something to the ground. So we'll select the ground here then open the materials and in landscapes we'll choose rocks and plants and click OK and here is our preview here we've imported this poser model clink and created a wall for him to stand in front of and again when we imported these models sometimes they are floating in midair and it might be hard to know how to place it so here on this left side is that drop button that I used earlier and it's called Smart Drop. So if you left click on it, it will just drop your object to the ground plane. But then if it's maybe off kilter and you right click on it, it will realign your object so one axis is perpendicular to the plane just below. So let's press Control Z and bring it back and demonstrate how this works some more. So if I bring in a cube and stretch it out and squish it down. Now it's a plank. Now if I just turn it like this, now we have a plane at an angle and if I right click on the smart drop and clank is aligned to the plank. So this can be a really nice feature. The problem with this particular figure, clank, is that the front is considered the bottom here in view. So we need to rotate it, but for now let's just put him down with the left click on the smart drop. So now with this scene we might want a little more detail. We can add objects other than plants or rocks. So if we go up here to file then load object you see there are a lot of things in here. And we've produced quite a few models and objects at Geek at Play and these fences are actually something from our construction building kit. So I'll just select one of these. I'll select this fence here. I'll just click OK and now we have a post apocalyptic fence for a robot and we'll move it there right there and left click to drop it so it places it down and here's another cool trick here I'm hovering over this and this to move it to the side if I press alt at the same time as I press down the left mouse button to move the fence it gets duplicated we have a copy so we release the Alt button now and we have a copy of the fence now so that you can do that instead of pressing Control C, Control V. So now we'll just arrange these, move this slightly this way. Then we have a clink standing right here and also when you're positioning things, putting it totally in the center sometimes doesn't look very nice. So what you can do is take the camera and rotate it around. But it can be hard to rotate it around an object manually. So if you go and highlight our clank, and now you go to the camera trackball, when you move it around, the camera rotates around the object. You can see the camera moving in our top view and how the scene changes in our camera view. So you can adjust it against that object so it looks more like what you want. So let's move Clank now. Move him a little bit more so he's facing us. 
So now in this position, we have this angle right here that is pushing our view towards Clank, towards his center right here. Maybe we want to tank this fence and align it a little closer and move it to the back of our object. And now it's time to bring in an atmosphere. Let's go to Atmosphere Edit and we'll just increase the sunlight a little, the brightness. And in the sky and fog, we'll increase the fog ground density and reduce the sky ground density. So that just increases the lighting a little bit. So let's look at our sunlight. And we'll move the sunlight so we have a little bit of a clear view of Clink. And let's preview what we have now. So we just imported a model from Poser, Clank, and we added some other models and we composed them. The model is a little dark, so maybe we should just try to load some different atmospheres with softer light. And if it's still a little bit dark, we can just click on the light here, just like we did last time, and bring some lighting into it, some additional lighting, so that our scene will be a little bit brighter and we can see a few more colors in our model. So now let's move this wall. Take our wall and move it so it's a little bit more open here. Okay, I think this is good so let's put it on the final render. And here's our final image now with a model that we imported from Poser where we set the pose. And we also created simple scenery in the back and a couple of props so the picture would look a little more interesting. And we also went over mixing materials a little more to make the wall look more interesting and we worked with the smart drop button. Thank you for watching this tutorial from Geek Up Play Studio. Please come visit us online at www.geekupplay.com or www.viewtutorials.com.